Hey, what's up everyone? Trader Tim from eminimind.com. I hope you all had a great weekend. Today is Monday, August 3rd, 2015. And today we're going to take a look at setting up and using Hakanashi candlestick charts along with a 512 tick chart on the Euro futures. Now this can be used across all markets, but for today's example I want to show you how I use the 512 tick chart in conjunction with the Hakanashi candlestick study for day trading the futures markets. As always, trading futures, options on futures, and retail off exchange foreign currency involves substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So the chart I have in front of me is uh, just the uh, Sierra chart platform. And the reason the candlesticks look a little bit different than your traditional candlestick, meaning we've got these kind of strange looking wicks and then these Stree streaks, if you will, of red and then some green, red, green, is because this is a Hakanashi candlestick. And the way the Hakanashi differs from the traditional candlestick is that the opening price is pulled from the midpoint of the prior candle. So with Hakanashi, we're not super concerned with the actual patterns of the bars. You'll notice most of the candlesticks are large bodies. And what Hakanashi helps us do is to visually identify the trend. Now, when we pair a Hakanashi candlestick with a small time frame, we can get a better idea of the small price fluctuations without seeing a lot of the noise. So a, f a tick chart, if you will, differs from a price chart because the tick chart takes into account a certain number of trades. And once those trades have been have taken place, then the bar closes. So I've set my tick chart to 512 ticks, meaning after 512 trades, the bar closes and then the new bar opens, as opposed to a 5-minute bar or a 15-minute bar or an hourly bar. The tick chart actually takes into account the number of trades that are taking place. So I combine the 512 tick chart with the Hakanashi candlestick study, and that gives me some really good insight to what's happening in the markets. And so what I want to do first is show you how to set up this chart. And then we'll walk through some trade setup uh, examples. So I'm going to open a new chart. So first thing I want to do is go up to Find Symbol. And if we go to Futures, in this case, we're using the Euro. So we're going to use the September contract. And then we'll just open a new chart. And so the first thing we want to do is to set up the, we'll do the tick study first. So we're going to go up to chart, chart settings, and right in the middle under this bar period, instead of days, minutes, we're going to do number of trades per bar, ticks. And we're going to set that number to 512. And when I hit apply, you don't notice a whole lot has changed, but if you come down here to the time, you'll see that, uh, so for example, here's 830, and then here's 930. So the the time, if you will, of price movement is the, the ticks of price movement are not based on time. They're based off of the number of trades. So the, the distance between the 8.30 mark and the 9.30 mark uh, on Monday might be, you know, let's just call this uh, two inches wide just looking at it on my screen. But on Tuesday, there might be a whole lot more trades that have taken place, so the distance between 8.30 and 9.30 might be four inches wide. So along with giving us a better indication of what's going on in the markets on the smaller time frames, kind of filtering out that noise, it also helps us determine the speed of the market and how much volume is coming into the markets, if you will. So then the next thing we want to do is go to Analysis, Studies. And if we just come 
down here we can do Hakanashi and we will add that to our chart and if I just hit apply you'll notice that it puts it down below as a second study so we want to go into settings and then click display as main price graph we'll hit apply and now we have a Hakanashi candlestick in a 512 tick chart as our chart setup now what I look for is uh, breakdowns and breakouts above or below the prior swing high or swing low. So today's Monday, I'm just going to pull back a little bit. And what I'm looking for is just a recent swing low to be violated to take a new short or a recent swing high to be violated to take a new long. So Monday, uh, this is uh, 8-3 right here, Monday. So here's the over kind of the overnight session Friday, uh, Saturdays, I'm sorry, Sunday's open. So this is really early in the morning. And uh, if we go back here to Friday, um, you know, the trend visually is down. But we can also see that with the Hakanashi candlestick study, it gives us a nice clean leg lower, slight, slight rally or bounce, another big leg lower. So we're looking for these nice streaks of red and green, red being down, green being up. So if we come over here to uh, kind of the early morning, if you will, we bounced three times, made a support level, and then we broke down to a new low, breaking this swing low. So what I like to do is use just a very simple 50% retracement and pulling from that high uh, to lows just after the, the break of the swing low. I look to enter once we get a little bit of a bounce back 50%. And so once we uh, come up to our entry at 50%, in this case uh, 982s, uh, looking to take a short because we broke down, and then uh, kind of ride that short down uh, to a new low. I typically look to take the first two uh, setups in a, in a new trend, meaning if we break, break down, uh, look for the first two setups to uh, to trade down and break new lows and so at the same time as we went into the morning here now we formed a new low down here but look what happened we started to move higher now at the time you don't know this is going to be a new uptrend but what defines a uptrend is higher highs and higher lows so this being the swing high that we're looking at once we break that swing high now we have a potential for a new trend. So I'm going to look for a pullback to the 50% long. And that's exactly what we got here, uh, down just about 30 minutes or so before the uh, NICE open. And uh, we started to move higher. And again, you know, looking for the first two, uh, two trades in the setup, or two setups in the new trend uh, to kind of, you know, get into the trend early. Uh, there's a lot of ways to manage the trade, but um, you know, if you're looking at uh, smaller trades, looking to get maybe uh, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 pips at a time on these in and out trades versus uh, leaving a little bit wider stop and trailing to kind of get a bigger one chunk of say 50 pips, uh, you know, this is a great way to look at the markets on a small time frame. A lot of people ask, when's the best time to trade the euro? Uh, I've done it all in terms of trading all hours of the day. Uh, the, the NICE open, the European open, and I found that the um, while those are both good, I pretty much focus on the NICE open, you know, an hour or so before the NICE opens and then a couple hours into the day. Uh, that seems to be when the, the best volume and the most activity is happening and the cleanest trades present themselves. So the euro is looking really good right now. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend taking a look at the Hakanashi and the 512 tick study, both in conjunction with each other. And it doesn't have to be the euro. It could be the ES or the Dow or another market. Uh, but yeah, take a look and see what you think. I've got uh, a whole lot of... Um, uh, more information on the the tick and the the nice or I'm sorry the tick and the uh, Hakanashi over at eminimind.com and you can also grab uh, or read more about my trading setups that I'm using for uh, for using the Hakanashi and the 512 tick chart with the euro specifically so I hope you all have a great week and we will talk to you again soon